During my years, I have come to discover that one of the perimeters you can measure how blessed you are is through how many haters you have. There is something about God blessing you that agitates haters. The moment God begins to bless you, your enemies will multiply geometrically. I have even discovered that you do not necessarily have to offend someone before they become your enemies. The mere fact that you are being blessed is an offense to them. That's just life. It's not fair, but life is not fair. People won't always be happy when God blesses you. Not only will humans hate on you, but the devil also. Nothing infuriates the devil more when the hand of God is on your life. Now folks, I don't know if you understand today, but Satan's after your life. He's after your blessings. He's after your loved ones. He's after your children. He's after your wife. He is after your husband. He is after your family. He is after your fortune. He is after your home. He is after your mind. He is after your peace. He is after your salvation. That precious gift of salvation is a blessing from the Lord. It is a gift from the Lord. And if he can take it, he would. The devil is about destroying your life. He hates you when you decide to follow Jesus because he knows you will be blessed. He hates you. He despises you. That when you gave your life to the Lord Jesus and accepted him in your life, he can no longer bully and push you around. When you point out the lies and the false narratives that have been put out against R. Kelly, you come across all kind of reactions. Even if you sit here and pinpoint everything that these people have said that is very inconsistent and point out each person that has spoken out against R. Kelly as being a liar, people will still give you a response like this. Okay, you home with your daddy. Your intention still ain't good. <laughs> R. Kelly's still a pedophile. You still clout chasing. And she can't tell me that she ain't writing R. Kelly. Tell me, I wanna, I'm jealous because I want to interview. I don't want to interview her. Have you seen the quality of interviews she's done? She's sitting in damn rooms with no lighting and shit and the sound echoing off the floor. I don't want that shit. As well as a waste of fucking time. Absolutely. And she ain't gonna admit the shit. Only thing she admitted to is ah, he made me eat shit. Well, you're writing them letters trying to go back. I can't stress enough how people are to look up the terms that they use. Because it's so annoying for people to keep abusing this pedal term and use it out of context, especially when referring to our Kelly. I challenge you. Go look up the word and then come back and tell me which accuser against R. Kelly is under the age of 13. I'll wait. You even look at the news reportings and when they speak on these alleged victims in the indictment, they're speaking as though they're still minors, which is not the case. These are grown ass women. Why is that? Why are they abusing this term? Meanwhile, certain entities are doing everything in their power to make this pedo a mental disability, a mental illness. Meanwhile, people are taking this turn so lightly. People are to check that. Isn't it odd that this man is being labeled this turn and they can't produce not one minor to this date? Just like saying this man has these STDs, which is the common thing we've heard all over YouTube. Yet you see all these celebrities and people so anxious to leak up with the women in his past. All that says a lot to me. But let's move on because a lot of fans wanted and expected R. Kelly to get a pardon for Trump. Is that really what you wanted? Considering when you associate pardons, 
you associate that with guilt. On my backup channel, I made a video referencing the 94 crime bill and the alleged secret meeting that took place in hip hop and pretty much the change in the censorship with the entertainment industry. I just feel like all that goes hand in hand and I'm going to use this situation as the prime example. Why? Because they're screaming and hollering about this justice they want. But I come to the realization that is the judicial system really set up for justice? Think about it. Depending on who you know, your consequences for your actions may vary. So when it comes to Trump issuing out all these pardons on his way out, that's nice. When it comes to R. Kelly, I just don't feel like, personally, just my opinion, I don't feel like people should have been looking for a pardon when we're expecting a vindication. And there is a difference. As I said earlier in the video, with a pardon, there's going to be this cloud of guilt that follows. Now granted, so many do believe he is guilty and still want to support him. That's them. I personally do not. So maybe the best thing would be to seek the vindication rather than the pardon. Many of us know how the judicial system works and how it's not always about what you did or if you're guilty or innocent, but more so who you know. So when this picture first emerged of Little Wayne with Trump, everybody had so much to say. And then you had all this information the second time got caught up with not only guns, but drugs, etc., etc., then you got the news that he has sold his masters for a hundred million dollars. Are we all surprised at these sequence of events or is it just me? Is it just a coincidence that this is how things ended up? Lil Wayne has been talking about his issues with his record label for such a long time. Same pattern so many other artists have had. He finds himself in a messed up situation and now he signs over not only his masters, but Nicki Minaj and Drake's. Is that a coincidence? Is it just me or am I the only one who was always warned about secular music? So I understand why people gravitate towards people who call themselves exposing the industry. I'm just saying people just need to take time to research the things that's being said. And when it comes to R. Kelly, it's plain and clear the things that are being said and what can be verified are two different things. Just as music transition from being something of positive recreation to something of mind control and programming, women have transitioned. From being objectified to now self-exploitation. That is the goal that I'm constantly seeing pushed. It's this thing of getting a rich man or scamming a rich man. That's being promoted. Isn't that odd? And then you're going to turn around and put this whole agenda in effect. Which makes these women who are self-exploiting themselves victims. When it comes to this whole situation, I feel like this. Right is right and wrong is wrong. When men come out and speak on their abuse, they're laughed at, they're ridiculed. Such as Raz V which I spoke on last year and shared in my community tab, if you wanted to see it. But when they speak out, oh, they're gay, all these homophobic slurs are tossed out. 
or say something hits the news where they're in an abusive situation with a woman. They're made fun of. They're weak. They're a punk. But then the minute a woman to just believe them and ask no questions. Like we don't know any women that will make up things and taint somebody's image. How many of you know situations where regular guys, when they're in a domestic situation and women call the police, even if they are the aggressor, the men go to jail? How many times do you see these women try to switch up this slut shaming versus accountability? They want an excuse because men do this. It's okay for women. But we don't realize that as Christians, as many claim to be, we should be preaching the modest image instead of giving in to this Jezebel spirit. So with that being said, to pull it all together, I think of it like this. Think about all these rumors and allegations we've heard in the industry. Going back, go far as you can think. Think about artists such as Elvis and all these artists that had people following them, which would be called baby groupies. And just look at how they're flipping the scenarios now. If they can open the door for this assault victimization theme to where women don't have to have any physical evidence and can even wait 10, 20 years down the line before they even make an allegation. Is that right? Is it wrong to question the motive? How many of you know women in regular life that go through abusive situations? And even when people try to interject, they don't listen. People know that women are being abused. And when they do interject, the women stay with the man. How many of you saw movies such as What's Love Got to Do With It that put a spotlight on abuse? How many of you know the history of how music was always manipulated even back then? You had African-American artists who would produce music, which would then be whitewashed. It's kind of like how I'm thinking about this mute R. Kelly. You see, the mu music industry and politics, in my opinion, go hand in hand. At one point in time, the transition was bringing in what some people would call industry plants and replacing them with informants. There's many stages if you just go and do your research that will make you side eye all the information that is being put out about the industry. So it's no surprise that people would recognize that some of these stories and rumors coming about the industry are true. However, you have to side eye the motives with some. Now, with all that being said, it's Satan. Have we all forgotten that he was musically inclined? So why are we so surprised when we see all these evil rumors being said about individuals in the industry? With that being said, why are people so willing to want their children involved with this? Why wouldn't you want to motivate and inspire your child to reach for bigger dreams when we make these comments is that really victim shaming because we have a problem with people being pushed into this jezebel and this slutty behavior this thought culture we have a problem with that do you think we would have a problem if people were instead of the entertainment bullshit they were providing the resources to change this cycle that we see. Why is it certain individuals get special treatment? Especially when it comes to exploiting children. 
We've heard all these narratives. I know I have, even as a child, of these children being exploited. Yet we're not going to look at these corporations as the predators. That's interesting. It's funny how these corporations will put the spotlight, put all this scandal around certain individuals while other individuals get this type of treatment. Are you a pedophile? I do not fit the either clinical or dictionary definition of it. If you're not a pedophile, then how would you describe your particular pathology? I acted out. Just like any American citizen, R. Kelly has the right for the presumption of innocence. And unfortunately, the public opinion has been steered in one direction. You have to stop and ask yourself why. Like I said, the entertainment industry and politics go hand in hand. And if you think back, a lot of this Me Too bullshit was kicked off as a result of Weinstein. And everybody blew past all of those other people that were called out and skipped to R. Kelly. People look over all these strange connections with these people in the media and all these other celebrities. But they keep the spotlight on R. Kelly. Ask yourself why? No matter how much you despise a person or hate a person for whatever reason, you cannot keep overlooking what's right in your face. Make sure you like this video, share it, comment below. What are your thoughts? Stay tuned as I will continue with a couple more videos with this Surviving Hollywood edition. Just to give you my perspective and how I see things. Have a good day.